Now, I don't know if you guys recall, but somewhat recently, if you've watched Tech YouTube, you'll have seen some YouTubers talking about this Gamdius case, this Athena M4M. Uh, obviously, because they've been paid to do so. Uh, so I saw it was a good price, so I thought I'd pick one up and give you an actual unbiased review from someone that's not been paid to do it and has actually bought it out of their own company money. So let's check out the Athena M4M, see if we like it, uh, and then see if it's a recommendation or not. All right, so here's how it looks from the front. Uh, it's not as small as it looks in the photos that you see on the listings. When you look on Amazon or wherever else you're going to buy this from, it looks like it's going to be like really super compact, but actually it's a bit closer to the size of something like a Fantex XTM3, so like a space optimized micro ATX chassis. There's a couple of versions available, but this is the wood version, and it has a small wood panel across here. But I don't like the look of this wood, it looks pretty low quality. It looks like something my nan might have had back in the 80s. The difficulty I have with this wood version is that if you buy the wood version, you're buying it because it looks nice. So if you don't make the wood look nice, what's the point? I'm not sure I quite like the wood style of this one, but there is a pure black version which probably looks a bit better. Right, let's nude this thing and we can have a look around the interior and see if we like it or not. So there's a couple of thumb screws on the back and then you can just slide the top piece off. It's mesh filtered, looks fine to me. The back panel is fully toolless. That's pretty nice, I like that. Also mesh filtered as well. And then we have the glass section, which also is toolless. So pop that off, easy does it. If desired, the front can pop off if you push it, but I expect for most people, you're just gonna leave whatever fans are in there. But let's say you wanna take that off, you can do so like that. And it's also mesh filtered. All of these Athena M4M cases, they come with three fans included. So on the wood version, they go for a non-RGB look. So you've got the two on the front and you've got the one on the rear here. And they all look to be 120 mil fans, which is pretty nice, especially considering the cost of 50 pounds for this case. Uh, I think that's fair enough. On the black version, you will get them RGB fans included rather than just plain black. Okay, let's briefly talk about the compatibility. For graphics cards, you can get 395 millimeters of GPU clearance, although I think that's not including the front fans, so you'll have to subtract a small amount for those. But that's gonna cover pretty much every kind of GPU you can think of. I mean, there's gonna be a couple maybe that are too big for here, but in general, you're not gonna have any problems with GPUs. If you wanna put a tower air cooler in here, you've got about 175 millimeters of clearance front to back, and that's gonna cover every air cooler that I can think of. And then in terms of motherboards, you've got micro ATX and ITX support. Fan and liquid cooler clearance is pretty good. You've got the two 120mm fans on the front, you've got the 120mm fan on the back, and there's three slots in the top for 120 fans or up to a 360mm liquid cooler as well. So the cooling capability in this kind of case is actually pretty good. You can put any kind of system in here. In addition, you could put three 120s or two 140s along the bottom of this case for additional GPU cooling if you need it. Although what I would say is if you have one of those micro ATX boards where the PCIe top slot isn't right at the top here, you might struggle to fit the fans alongside a very thick GPU, but that's not unique to this case. That happens with all kinds of these micro ATX builds. In the cable management chamber, it's essentially what you'd expect. You've got room for full ATX power supplies here, although don't put in those big HX long power supplies. Just put in a standard size ATX power supply and you'll be fine. Your cables can go down into the stuffing area here with a little slide out plate, all the cables here, and you've got a few tie down points here that you can do your cable management in. So the back is fairly decent for cable management. The only thing you might struggle with is if you want to put in uh, sleeved cable extensions, like colored cable extensions, because you don't have a lot of room here to stuff that excess that you would have with such cables. There's also a plate here that will allow you to mount some storage drives, which will come off on this plate, held in by screws on both sides. From what I can see here, I expect two drives is the maximum. I think two 3.5 inch drives might be a little bit tight, but certainly two two and a half inch drives, or maybe one of each will fit in there. You might also notice there's quite a lot of gaps in the panel. Uh, that's presumably because it is back connect compatible. The front IO is actually pretty generous. You've got a headset jack, you've got two USB A's, which are 3.2. You've also got a USB 3.2 type C as well. There's two buttons, one for power and one for reset. Do you really need a reset switch on a modern case? Probably not, but it is quite useful if you've got perhaps an older motherboard without an addressable RGB header, you could use this to change the uh, RGB color. If you want, that's something to think about. 
Generally on these smaller cases, I prefer it to be more minimal. I'd rather just have a power button, a USB-A and a USB-C, and the rest can all be done somewhere else. But that's just my personal preference. A lot of people will like the number of ports that you get there. This little vanity cable management plate just comes off with a single screw down here. So we'll just whip that off. And this one just swings out. I made the mistake of taking the whole mechanism off here when I've used this case before. Don't do that. You don't need to do that. You can just open the door like this and then shut it, which is quite nice. Quite a nice action. Cables simply correspond with the front panel, USB 3, USB-C, HD audio, power on reset switch, and the included fans are daisy chained together out of the box and terminate in a standard PWM like this. You obviously get a bunch of screws with the case as well. The only issue that I can see here is that it comes with standoffs. I think there's loads pre-installed, but the issue is it doesn't come with one of those nut driver attachments. So you, you can't really move these around unless you already have a five millimeter socket like you'd get in an iFixit kit, which is pretty unfortunate. I feel for a micro ATX case, really any case, you should be getting that nut driver included so that you can move the standoffs around. This isn't a build showcase video or anything, so I'll just talk you through the parts as I install them so you can see how it works. Starting with this Gigabyte P550BS power supply. Quite a funny name, hopefully that's not foreshadowing anything. It's actually an 80 plus silver rated power supply, which I haven't seen in a long time. Very strange. But obviously that fits in fine there, and then you've got the fan facing towards the outside of the case. You then simply plug in this extension cord so that you can plug in onto the back of the PC. So we'll plug that in here. And immediately you see one of the huge limitations with this case, which is a complete design oversight. Because look at where this power cable is going. It's going right into the side panel here. There's absolutely no chance I'm gonna be able to bend that in a safe manner. So we worked out last time on a stream that the only way you can actually get this to bend properly is to remove this side panel attachment piece here. So now that we've taken out that toolless side panel attachment, we can actually just about squish it in. This is not ideal. It's it's safe, but I don't like doing this and you shouldn't have to modify your case just to get something to fit. The way that other manufacturers get around this is they have the power supply cable coming out of the side like this rather than out of the bottom. Then that overcomes all the problems. Of course, with the power supply plug, on some power supplies, it will be the other way up. So that does present a bit of a problem, but I'm still sure that if you put it out the side here, you'd be in a better position than putting it out the bottom here. I shouldn't have to modify the case here to ensure a safe power supply installation. And this will be our platform today. It's a B450 motherboard going for a budget build with a Ryzen 55500, just a plain old stock cooler, 16 gigabytes of RAM, which I got a really good price. And of course, an M2 SSD. Now, so usually I, I lay the case down to put the motherboard in, but so that I can show you guys, I'll do it upright. All right, so I've plugged in a lot of the cables. Because we're on an older platform, we can't use that front panel USB-C, so I'll put a little plug on that. Um, but looking pretty tidy. All that remains now is to put the video card in, but we'll need to make a bit of space for it. Now, here's the unfortunate thing. RTX 3050 6 gigs. It's not even the good 3050. The reason I got this is I got it at like a fairly standard price of about £145. And I get people asking me all the time, I just need a PC for like The Sims and some general use. I just want it to be all right ish at gaming, but mainly be a regular PC. And I think, despite this not being the best GPU ever, I think it is going to fill that brief. Obviously, the used market is going to be a lot better than something like this. But there's many people out there that value the warranty, aftercare and service as much as the PC itself. So that's the justification here. Would I ever put a 3050 into somebody in my family or friends? No, but this is what the market is asking me to do. The other interesting thing about this is it doesn't even have a supplemental power requirement. So we don't even have to hook any cables up. So we'll just put that in. We'll actually see how it performs later. The performance isn't gonna be amazing on this, is it? Come on. Okay, the video card is in. This case does have an integrated anti-sag bracket, which as you can see is doing amazing work for this GPU. And now all that remains is to cable manage this bad boy. I mean, I shouldn't call it a bad boy. I think to cable manage this boy would probably be more suitable. Uh, so let's do it. Now, of course, it is worth noting that we had to take out this toolless panel part here. So it'd be interesting to see how secure this is when we put it on. So it's this part here is pushing on this plug, so I'm gonna to have to remove that. And 
And actually, despite taking this part of the tallest panel off, it is all flush and it all does look good. So build is now complete. We're doing a little BIOS update, get us onto the latest version, and we'll jump in some testing afterwards. Let's just show you a bit of B-roll first. Well, as expected, with these fairly low-end parts, the temperatures were completely fine. Um, but it's, you can't really say much about how good this case is just based on the low-end parts that are there. But obviously, just for completeness, there it is. And I forgot it's actually the 4500 rather than the 5500 because this is a super budget build. All right, guys, you can see we're playing Fortnite here. This is actually at 1440p resolution. Uh, we're playing on low settings, but we're not in the performance mode. We're in the regular mode. And uh, yeah, it's looking pretty nice. Low settings with epic draw distance is how a lot of people pay for now. It doesn't look too bad at all. Um, and in fact, look, we've got over 100 FPS average. The 1% are at 50. But actually, this system is pretty balanced because you can look at that CPU usage. It does sometimes bounce up to 95. You're getting the 4.2 gigahertz boost. Temperatures are great. GPU's almost at 100%. So it's pretty well balanced, actually. Right, now just dropped it down to 1080p and that has actually improved things quite a lot so you can see we're now getting 130 odd fps we're not getting as many frame spikes we're still getting some although that does sometimes happen in fortnite um and this does feel a decent bit smoother one percent those are a little bit better all right guys so we are playing apex loggies playing at 1080p resolution but when i had it it was stretching it to the full screen it looked like absolute cheeks but 1080p high settings, we're getting 125 FPS, 1% of those of 80, and this feels really, really good. It feels really smooth. Uh, I'd have no problems playing like this. If I was on a 1080p screen on a bit of a budget, uh, I'd be pretty dang pleased with this. So let's see if we can get any kills. Shit, well, I didn't get any kills because I don't have any audio, so I didn't know where anybody actually was. But that's okay, I was only testing the game, and uh, pretty nice performance from this 3050 6 gig. So I went into this video trying to explore the Gamdius case, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but throughout this process I've actually discovered something. The really low-end PC gear, like this RTX 3050 6 gig and a Ryzen 5 4500, is still capable of producing an excellent gaming result as long as your expectations are reasonable. And I think that's something we forget when we see all these graphics cards and other parts being so expensive. Don't forget that on budget gear, you can still get a great experience. And I think that might be especially important going forward into such a difficult market with the RAM. There is still that possibility to get good gaming performance at a low price. But now on to the case. So what do we think about this? Uh, rather than talk you through my whole review, I'll have it up on screen now with the different domains and what I thought of this case. But overall, I do quite like it. It was £51 when I bought it. That includes the tax in the UK. The construction quality is fairly decent. It comes with fans. You can fit quite a lot of stuff into it. And generally, most people are going to have no problems with this, apart from its one fatal flaw, and that is the power supply mounting. So you saw in the video where we had that power supply plug where that cable had to bend around the corner and we actually had to remove the uh, little insert that holds the tallest panel in place and that is just an unacceptable design oversight in my opinion. Thankfully there are actually three points of mounting so we can actually take that mechanism out to allow the power supply to be activated while still having the panel sit flush on the side. So at the end of it after we took that piece out everything was fine but it's just not ideal and really not representative of a very premium product. When I think about this price range, now that we've got the Fantex XT M3 or XT V3, we've got some excellent budget choices now. And I just think the Fantex XT M3 for a very similar price to this Gamdius is offering better build quality and finishing. That's just my opinion though. If you like the look of this case and you think it looks decent and all that stuff, great. I think you're still going to like it, but just bear in mind those caveats that we've talked about. What is nice is seeing that the micro ATX form factors had a bit of a revival of some sorts because 
Traditionally, it's the big ATX tower cases that got all the hype. Now people are slightly downsizing to those more space optimized micro ATX, which is a fantastic middle ground between those big ATX cases and those mini ITX cases. Obviously you get the smaller size, but without having to pay the ITX tax. So that's why they're so popular nowadays. So overall, would I recommend this case? Maybe. If the Fantex XTM3 didn't exist, I probably would recommend it, even though you have to mod it a little bit. But now I would say, guys, just get the Fantex because it's nicer. But some people would prefer the look of this one. And in that case, you're absolutely fine. I don't really like the wood paddling on this one. I don't think it looks that great. I think if you can get that black version with the RGB fans, that's probably the better choice. I certainly wouldn't pay more than £60 for this case. I think this is firmly a budget option. Other considerations, I really wouldn't be using any custom sleeved cables in this case. There's not that much room to route them around. Ideally, you use a modular power supply unit if you can, although like today we have made it work with a fully wired unit. So a little few things to think about there, but overall a decent case. So whilst the YouTube guys were glazing it a little bit more than I would like, they weren't wrong in saying that it's half decent.